I'm the Reverend Edward B. Smart, pastor of the First African Methodist Episcopal Church of Albany. What a joy it is to be a part of this celebration on this glorious morning. In this historical year, let us pause to remember our brothers and sisters and their struggles not so many years ago. Harriet Tubman, Sojourner Truth, Frederick Douglass, Samuel Edge, and Benjamin Lattimore, Stephen Myers, Richard Allen, Rosa Parks, Medgar Evers, and Ralph Abernathy, Martin Luther King, of course, and Barack Obama. Their struggles provided a pathway so that all Americans could enjoy their basic human rights identified for us in the Constitution of the United States on this day before the inauguration of the 44th President of the United States. Let us now look back to see how far we've come. The overwhelming success of the March on Washington propelled the American Civil Rights Movement to new heights. Within a year, Congress and a new president adopted sweeping civil rights legislation, outlawing racial discrimination in day-to-day -day activities. But I submit to you this evening that this way of nonviolence will help us not to seek to rise from a position of disadvantage to one of advantage, thus subverting justice. What remained, said Dr. Martin Luther King, was the plight of many Southern blacks, unable to exercise the fundamental right to vote. What you're really trying to do is intimidate these people and by making them stand in the raid, keep them from registering to vote. Once again, he took to the streets. Only this time, marches were met with unimaginable violence at the hands of police. Nevertheless, the violence had an opposite effect. The movement was not quelled. It grew, gaining more national support for African Americans denied their voting rights. In 1965, the Voting Rights Act was passed supporting the rights granted blacks and all those born in the United States as called for in the 15th Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. <laughs> 